Welcome back. Last time we talked about what Venus is doing at the highest level. Really, what are jet engines versus rocket engines? How is the detonation engine changing some of those things? What does it mean to fly hypersonic? What are some of the challenges? And ultimately, how detonation engines with rocket-based combined cycle really enables a new way to attack this problem. And I finished with showing some of our results, some of the engine testing, some of the drone flights that we've done here at Venus, and really, this time, I wanted to unpack that a little bit more and talk about our full operations. What does it mean to go design, build, test, and fly? And in order to do that, though, we have to start at the top level, which is say this is these are all hard things. And you know, nowhere else are you seeing so visibly the importance of just step by step, brick by brick, just go do something and, and you know, it's gonna blow up but we're gonna learn a ton of things than SpaceX. They've really demonstrated how that process is, is right. You take the right bite-sized chunk, you move forward, you move forward, you move forward. And then we, we forget that 20 years ago, this little startup in California that was dreaming about putting a rocket in space and how crazy that was, they are now you know, doing it almost daily. Like it's something like every 2.7 days on average, right now in 2024, there's a Falcon 9 launch. And, and then we're excited about what they're doing with Starship. So that, that, that shows you where this can go and, and really showing you where the aerospace community has sort of been reinvigorated and learned, whether you're talking about those early days of SpaceX or kind of the next generation of companies like Virgin Orbit, Firefly, you, you name it, the people who've kind of followed from there and, and going on and doing new things, including you know, some of the people we have here at Venus. But this is, this is sort of their third go around. And I, I want to start off, though, with a little bit of, you know, I, I'm a naval reserve engineering duty officer. And, and actually, this sort of phrase of build a little, test a little, learn a lot came from a Navy engineering duty officer. This is Admiral Wayne Meyer, who's an engineering duty officer, father of the Aegis system. And if you haven't heard of the Aegis system, it is, you know, these big, includes the big radars we have on our destroyers and cruisers that can detect launches and then the ability to sort of intercept these things. And this all came from a lot of really hard work, a lot of uh, really fascinating engineering systems here. But but this, this progress of just, just no, just move the ball forward, kind of get going. Uh, that, the quote you may have heard, and this is what we use here at Venus, really started there. And so, you know, when we think through this whole cycle, design, build, test, fly, the, the first thing you have to really get a handle on is just how much of this are you going to go, going to go do, right? What's, what's the right next incremental step? Because humans, we are, we are actually really horrible at figuring out what we can do in a year. We can figure out what we can do this month. That's pretty okay. This week, we're like, this week's already planned. We're good. You know, this month, you have a decent idea. But somewhere around that three-month stage, you, you know, we're, we're not really good at, at um, talking past a quarter, uh, certainly not a year. And then we're all horrible at kind of the five, 10-year plans. And so a lot of this starts off just at the design level. And what do you got to do from here? And so this is kind of a classic systems engineering V. And and when we're talking about, you know, a, a big dream, we want to go fly hypersonically, or, or we just want to take this engine and test it, you, you have to kind of break it down at multiple stages. And so what are your engineers will talk about? What are your requirements? And that's just fancy way of like, write it down. Like, I want to go at this altitude. I want to do these speeds. I want to do those things. But a lot of that is kind of squishy, especially when you're, you're doing new things, right? I, I, we don't have some customer that is out there saying, you know, Mach 4.1 is exactly what we need, not 4.2. That, that doesn't happen. And so what's that process of building that through? And then as you are then going from, you know, concepts to high level requirements to subsystems down into detailed design, and as you build it back up, right, how do you build for manufacturing? How do you build, you know, how do you design for manufacturing? How do you design for testing? How do you design for sort of verifying what we use these requirements? And the you know, the DoD acquisition system gets a lot of slack for for being you know this pretty big behemoth and really complicated, but there's if you take it from a certain viewpoint, there's actually a lot of beauty inside of some of the lessons learned at the DoD. Now, I agreed, sometimes the pace and the strategy may be wrong, but you can actually take this, this very high level view of what the DoD is doing from this point of view where it's sort of, hey, we, we, we've decided we need something. That's this material de development decision. Uh, what we have doesn't work or we, we need to do the next best thing. And then you would spend some amount of time studying it, doing analysis of alternatives. And then you would have a sort of a go forward decision like, okay, let's now, let's start writing it up. Let's get proposals. Let's, let's get to a 
a preliminary design review. Maybe there's some testing that needs to go happen. There's some proof that has to happen to understand that this system that we want to go do is feasible. And then you would get to this milestone B is, is what they call it. This is sort of program start. At this point, it's like, okay, we're off to the races. You know, there's, you know, part of what makes this challenging in the DOD timeframe is just, is just the funding and the dollars and, and how do you get all that within the president's budget. I'm not going to get into that, all that today, but, but at least at a high level, you can kind of then see that, you know, critical design review and then getting into production, low rate initial production, that's LRIP. And then, and then you know, what are your testing requirements? And then, and then making sure you're understanding this from a support point of view, what's the maintenance cost? What's the disposal cost there at the end? So this is a very simplified view. And then, uh, you know, people get terrified when you show them like the full view. <laughs> this is, even this is considered high level. And this is true even at Venus that, well, you know, your screen might not be big enough to see any of these different pieces. These are all things that have to happen, right? Where maybe you're looking at a system engineering plan and it's, and it's like, well, what are you going to test? How are you going to go verify that? All right. Or maybe it's a logistics, like what, what do you need to do in order to even support a test at this range, whether it's range access or can you get your, you know, in our case, we carry peroxide. Can you get your peroxide to that range? You know, me on here, there's a, you know, a software plan. And, and what's your what's your plan for rolling out the software? What's your cybersecurity plan? How are you going to handle all of this? So, while this still looks crazy, this is a pretty um, this is still a pretty high level view of yes, this is a DoD document. This is talk about DoD applications, but honestly, at, at a startup level, you really are doing many of these things. There might be some details down here in the financial management that would be you know, particular to the DoD that you wouldn't be doing at a startup. But but all of these things are, are happening, and so you know, I say all that to just put in perspective that when, when companies are doing hard things, like it, it really is, um, it is impressive. Like actually the, the, at Venus, the very first thing we hot fired on our engine test stand was a marshmallow, right? In fact, it was even before that, the first thing we did was we hooked up, you know, air and propane and lit it. Like just, just basic things, but it, it was, it's that a little bit to this agile, method, right? And up here, this is now a programming sort of, you know, what's waterfall versus agile and these sprints and all that. But, but the, the kind of unlock that you have seen if you're a software engineer or you're working in, in you know, kind of the, what we, the tech space, you, you've seen what the power of this is taking little bite-sized chunks and just, right, kind of turning the crank. Now, if you're, if you're a software development, you, you would be, you know, hopefully in the agile system, be pretty strict to this. Like these are two week cycles and you're you're getting pulled from the customer and you're getting it out there and you're understanding right there, there's value in doing that. But it's the same is true even when you're doing hard things, that there's value in building small and going from there and learning. And, you know, maybe you're not getting it in front of the customer, but you are, you're learning yourselves, right? It's build a little, test a little, learn a lot. And so as I start to kind of dig in a little bit and just going to keep this super high level, this, this diagram I put up, would be sort of a standard aircraft way of assessing what the requirements are. And so you see a couple of things. I'm just going to write them down on the corner here. But you would you would take a look at, again, if, from an aircraft flight point of view, what's the thrust to weight of the system? And you, usually this axis is thrust, thrust at sea level and weight at takeoff. But just trying to understand, like, how, how big of an engine do you need? And then on the bottom axis, this is wing loading, which is, well, what's the weight of the aircraft? compared to the area of the wings. And this is trying to capture then a little bit of lift drag connections. That's what why you have sort of this, these curves and the wing loading. And then you might, you, know, you can solve kind of different conditions. Well, I, I need to take off in this runway length, or I, I need to have this kind of climb capability. I have, you know, I want to be able to land in this many feet on a runway without having to pop a parachute. So kind of standard aircraft design would, would frame it from this point of view. Uh, but but we're doing hypersonics. And so some of where this gets challenging is a lot of this changes, right? That this is not one single thrust that describes all things. In fact, right, we've covered in the previous section, the thrust is changing with altitudes and speeds. And right, you, you have, you know, this thrust part, remember, it kind of went back to, you know, if here was your sort of drag of the system, uh, a jet engine may have a capability that does that and kind of tails off as so you have Again, kind of some thrust pinches and things like that. So it's it's not quite as simple as this. In fact, it, it's more complicated because it's, this might be looking at, you know, you might have one condition in here that represents a cruise condition, right? That's what you're looking to do. Well, 
cruising at what at what altitude, right? At what speed? From from those that get a dynamic pressure, yes, that's helpful. But then it it that's also going to give me a temperature, right? And at, at what temperature? And then our material choice is kind of what we covered a little bit. And if you went part of the deep dives on some of those details, you, you saw us kind of open the the aperture a little bit there on on some of those challenges of hypersonics. And so you you would kind of wrap all of those things up at tr at a high level, right? So you you try to frame this out and say, okay, there's my my sort of high level requirements. This might be at the vehicle level or level you know level zero requirement maybe so, uh, one. Take your pick. But from there. You know, one person can't do all of this, and so you have teams. And then, how do you how do you break this out, this information out? So maybe taking your thrust and your altitude, and and trying to define a box. Now that your propulsion team can go can go take that and, and iterate, right? And, and and try to try to hit these deliverables. But w within this propulsion team, there may not be enough information. So they're going to get that, and then and then have to add their own information, their own requirements that maybe you know. We don't care at this top vehicle level, but within the propulsion team, you might absolutely care. Like what, you know, how um, how quickly do we need the the injector to turn on? And you know, at, at this level, it, it's sort of like no, just deliver thrust within a couple of seconds. But but here, it might be actually no. For our startup sequence, we need to do this and then this and this and this. It in, in order to deliver a, a thrust within a couple of seconds, but the, these requirements down here to will then be generated. And then you would break that down even more. So maybe if you call that, you know, level one, and then you know, might have some level level two requirements. Maybe now I need to provide my or you know, injector design engineer with enough details to go. The engineer that's looking at the the chamber itself, and then you know the, the engineer that's then trying to deliver all the propellants, the, the the pumps. And, you know, this this can continue, right? And then you, of course. Um, your, your avionics, what's your communications and, and brains, flight flight controls, like all, all these things, different things that kind of fall in there. Of course, there's, uh, you know, in general, just your, your flight sciences, right? So what's, what's the drag and the aerodynamics? And in fact, we, you know, these these are all information needs to flow sideways, again, needs to be broken down. So you, you have, uh, again, sort of this challenge of, of all of these things then wrap up, you know, that's that's an addition to understanding what are the the testing requirements behind it, right? What 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 verification are you trying to do? And, and then of course you're you're trying to iterate. So back to my statement of the first thing we we hot fired was a marshmallow. Like what what's the right level to do now? What's too much? What how how can we frame this a little bit back better so that we're not we're not just spinning your wheels and you're not, not getting stuck? And right? we've all seen examples of programs that are um, you know too ambitious and they're trying to do too much. If they just kind of shortened in, it would have been okay. Uh, and and then all of this, you'll have some estimate of all of this with, that'll take sort of time and money. And is that okay? Is that fundable? Back back to kind of the we talked on in the last time. Like ultimately, you know, what are you trying to do? Your business. You're you're trying to deliver a value, and the value is people who want to go across the world fast. And and you know they they don't necessarily care about um, altitudes or temperatures and all this stuff. They they just they want to be able to go from A to B in a certain amount of time. And that time, depending on what the time is, there's a value in that time. So, you know, as we kind of dig through and, and, and dig in, and I hope you join me on some of the deeper dives as we go kind of into each design, build, test, and fly, uh, you'll hear from some of the Venus experts as we'll kind of crack open the hood a little bit more on this. But just kind of show you that, like, you know, new technologies and new pieces then kind of help along the way. And so there are things that are happening now that you, you couldn't do in the past. A lot of times... You know, certainly at Venus, some key technologies, key advances in other fields helped allow the detonation engine to come alive. And I'll just highlight here, like Velo 3D is a phenomenal 3D printing system. And so you just look at this complexity that you can now do with 3D printing from a, a build process, but actually you might come in back in and change this. So you might, you know, this might be the design level, but what, what you can build then changes how your design would happen. Actually, we can build that. We can do it cheaper that cost in dollars and time. And so, you know, enabling these new technologies and then you go build it. So here, here's some pictures from our drone, right? Kind of coming together, different, different parts of it. Here's the drone almost fully built, kind of getting all the rest of the valves and lines installed in avionics. But you see, right, what, back to the, the dollars and time and, and what's the right bite size. So design, build, and then test. And here's a fun video just showing all of our engine tests 
kind of as a stack up. And so you build, 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 test, 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 test. In fact, that you know the highlight reel that covers you know roughly a year. Again, it shows you just by doing little bite-sized things. You know, I can look at that video and see all the progressions, the little steps that we've done along the way to get to that final one you saw there in the long duration detonation engine going for a long time. And then right, you put that all together, and then you go fly. And so we I showed you some of the drone we we're building. And this next video is in the first flight. So I hope you join us on the deep dives as we kind of break down each one of these design, build, test, fly. You'll hear from more of the team, some of the experts we brought on board on each one. See you then.